Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look over twins. Now twins are amazing. They provide one of the best ways of creating animations and creating them from code. So let's just get started with it. Now in order to begin, let's create a new inherited scene of this current scene. And in this inherited scene, we want to see the basic functionality of twins by animating a platform. So I'm going to add a child node and click on Sprite 2D. Now here, let's call this platform and let's drag and drop this uh, platform PNG image. And now you see we have a little platform here and let's just add a script to it. Let's call it platform GD. That's perfect. And in here, we want to animate this platform. Okay, now we don't need the process function. We're just gonna get into the ready function. Let's just first start by creating a twin. To create a twin, we need to get the tree. So I'm gonna say var twin equals to get tree dot create twin. Okay, with this twin, we can animate any property we want from our platform. So let's just animate the position we want to make this platform move from left to right. So Let's just uh, go back to the script and let's say twin dot twin property. And in this twin property function, we have to specify the object that we want to animate. So the object is the object having the script, the actual sprite. So I'm going to write down self and the property that we want to animate is going to be the position. Okay, but let's say we didn't know this name. How did you know that name? Well, if you want to know this name, you can go into the editor and click on transform. And here you see I have position. And if I hover on it, you'll see that a new message appears with the actual name of the property, which is position with the lowercase letter P. Okay, and now I can specify the final value that I want this position to be. So let's just say that I want this position to be the same, so position plus something. So let's just say maybe vector 2 dot right multiplied by 200. So we want to make it move towards the right. Okay. And as the final parameter, we want to see how much time it should take to do this animation. So let's just say maybe two seconds. Why not? Okay. If I save this scene, so maybe main basic. I can now run it and yeah, let's just select the current scene. And you see that my platform moves about 200 uh, pixels to the right. Okay, but as you can see, uh, writing this down can be pretty hard. So maybe let's simplify it a little. Now, first of all, what we can do is to be a bit more specific. So instead of animating the whole position, we can animate only the X axis because we only want it to move the platform horizontally. So if I want to only animate this, I can specify the X property by writing down colon and X. And now I can take position dot X and instead of moving it to the right multiplied by 200, I can say plus 200. Now if I save and press F5, you'll see that basically the same thing happens. This is still a bit too long and maybe I don't really like writing position.x every time I want to move relative to my current position. Now this is better, but we can make it even better by specifying that this movement is relative to the current position. How do we do that? Well, I can remove the position.x plus and I can just write after the twin property as relative. And if I wrote as relative, you'll see that again, it's going to move from this spot to this spot 200 pixels. If I were to not write this, then it would have just moved to the position 200. So see, it's going back actually. Okay, but let's put it back to as relative and let's maybe try to make this a little better. In general, we don't want to have platforms that move and then immediately stop. What we would like maybe would be to animate this platform to move back and forth and how can we do that? Well, we can create another twin property to take it in the opposite direction. So let's just move minus 200 back. So now if I save, you see that it goes to 100 in front and it goes to 100 to the back and then it stops. Okay, how do we make it not stop? Well, we can specify that our twin should have an amount of loops. 
with the set loops function. So I'm going to write set loops. And here we can see how many loops we want this animation to have. But if we don't specify anything, the amount of loops is going to be infinite. So until the application stops, we are going to keep looping and looping again. If I press F5, you'll see that the platform moves from left to right, right to left, and then again from left to right, and so on. Okay. One other cool feature is that we can specify where the twin animation should start from. So let's just say that we wanted our platform to start from the left of the screen and reach the end, and then start again from the left and reach the end. Now, how do we do that? Well, let's just copy this line and let's comment everything that we have here. And now I'm going to paste this line and we want to animate the X property from where? Well, we want it to start from a minus 200. And we want it to finish at the edge of the screen, maybe 1000 or something. So let's just say that we want the animation to end at 1200 and we want it to start at minus 200. Why not? So I'm just going to write here dot from and minus 200. Now the tween will know to start from minus 200 and finish at 1200. Now, if I save, it's going to be pretty fast because it's two seconds. But yeah, as you can see, it goes forever and ever around the screen. Why? Because we set the loops and we also set that uh, the twin property should start from minus 200. So basically from around here. OK, but if you're not impressed yet, then let's go and see another example. I'm going to go to the main scene and here I'm just going to create a new inherited scene. And with this new scene, let's create a character. Let's make, make a node 2D. And in this node 2D, I want to add two sprites, one sprite for the body, and there's going to be another sprite for the face. And let's just make our character something like a rhombus. Let's give it some face. Let's make it a happy character like that. And now let's see what we can do with this one. I'm going to call it character and I'm going to create a new script and character GD. That's perfect. And first of all, let's twin a property, some property. Let's just say that we want to twin the scale of uh, our character. So I'm going to say, uh, first of all, var twin equals to get three dot create twin. Okay. And we want to say twin dot twin property and self scale. And let's just shrink this character into non-existence. Why not? So let's just say uh, from the current scale, I'm going to write vector two dot zero. And let's do that in three seconds. Okay. Now I can save this scene as character scene. Why not? Okay, and now if I'm going to press F6, you'll see that our character is going to shrink into non-existence. But as you can see, the non-existence is not quite real because the character is still here. In the remote, we still have a reference to our character. It's just that it is scaled to the zero size. How do we make this character actually disappear? So for example, let's call Q3. Well, we could call Q3 here, but if we simply call Q3, the animation is not finished and we're going to have an issue. What we can do is to call this Q3 only after the animation is finished. Well, how do we do that? Twin has an additional function, which is twin callback. With this twin callback, we can simply write down the name of a callback. So I'm just going to say Q3. And basically what this is going to do is to scale everything down and afterwards to free this character. So let's see how this works. It gets scaled down. And if I click on remote, the character just disappeared. Now, obviously, since this is a callback, we can also bind parameters to it. So for example, maybe the character is going to say bye bye after it disappears. So let's just make another twin callback. Let's write down a function here, func trunk, and get the message 
parameter and in here let's just print message and we can of course here bind that so shrunk dot bind and maybe by by okay now if we were to run it you'd see that our character is shrinking and in the console we got bye bye immediately after the character shrunk and now additionally we might also want to give our little guy some more time in this world so let's just say twin dot twin interval and with this we can specify some time that we want to pass so let's just say two seconds and now if we save that you'll see that we are gonna wait two seconds with the guy here and then he is going to start scaling down and vanishing. Now finally, you might also want to combine the functionalities of twin callback and twin property. And we can do exactly that by calling twin method. Twin method is going to allow us to basically call a method by giving it a varying argument. So let's see how we do that. Let's just erase everything for now to keep it simple. And here I'm just gonna write twin method. And in this, I want to call a method. Which method? Well, the only method we have is shrunk. So let's call shrunk. And let's give it a varying parameter. So we want from to be 0. And we want to print the last number 200. Why not? Over the duration of 3 seconds. So if I run it right now, you'll see that I print numbers from 0 to 200. Okay. But if I specify, let's say, one second, you'll see that this happens much faster. So already done. Now you might see that these numbers are not perfectly precise. So maybe this is not made for printing, but more like for uh, physics elements. So just be careful with that a bit. And why is that? Well, it's because tween basically comes from in between. So what it does, it's uh, getting uh, through linear interpolation, the values in between what we have given. And of course, if the duration was one second, then maybe it can't get all the values over one second. But if we give it something like six seconds, uh, let's just run it again, just to make sure that we see this properly. You'll see that over six seconds, uh, we get the values even more than once. So it's much easier to get those values in between and it and it stays over those values for a much longer time than it would if I only had, let's say, half a second. Let's see what, what happens if I write 0.5. You see, I even start skipping a bunch of numbers. Just like it would happen with the linear interpolation of any kind of animation. Okay, but let's take a step back and talk a bit about twin behavior. So you might have noticed that up until this point, all calls to twin property or twin method or so on were being called sequentially, as in one after another. But this is not written in stone. What we can do is actually call them at the same time in parallel. So let's, let's try to see how that would look like. So again, I'm going to write twin property and uh, let's again scale our object so I'm gonna say scale and this time let's scale him up because I guess he deserves it so I'm gonna say uh, vector 2.1 multiplied by 2 so let's make it twice as big and over 2 seconds and additionally let's make another twin property dot twin property and Again on self, position, and vector two dot down, multiplied by 200, why not, over two seconds. And let's make this movement relative. So from the current position, we move down 200 pixels. Okay, now if we were to run this, you'll see that our character scales and then moves down. Okay, but uh, maybe that's not the behavior we went for. Maybe we wanted the character to scale and move down at the same time. For that, we can simply say here that parallel, and let's just say true. If we wrote this, then everything inside this twin, all twin property calls are gonna happen in parallel. So if I run this again, you'll see that it 
moves down and scales at the same time over two seconds. Okay, but now that we know about this sequentiality, we can use it to our advantage. So let's just create a new inherited scene from main again. And in here, I want to add a new node 2D, which is gonna be just a container. So let's just call it container. And in this container, we want to add a bunch of sprites. So let's just make a sprite 2D and let's duplicate it. And let's uh, assign maybe an image a uh, red circle for this sprite, this sprite, another red circle, put it here, and I'm gonna speed this up. Okay, we have a bunch of elements in this container. So let's just create a script here. Let's call it container, doesn't matter too much. Uh, and in this ready function, let's create a tween which animates each of these sprites individually. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to say var tween equals to get three dot create tween. And for each child in the children of this container, so for child in get children, we want to make the child rise a bit up and then come back again. So let's just make a tween dot tween property and let's say child position factor 2 dot up multiplied by 50 and one second and let's duplicate this and let's multiply it by vector 2 dot down over one second let's save this as a new scene so popping or bobbing or whatever and now if i press f6 you're gonna see that this moves okay <laughs> i should have made the move movement relative so as relative and again as relative and if i run it now you'll see that this moves up and down this other one moves up and down and you see that even if i did not specify it here things happen sequentially of course if i wanted everything to rise at the same time i could have said set parallel to true and if I run it, you'll see that everything rose and came back again at the same time. Now, I know there's been a lot of information, so let's take a breather before we move on, because there are even more features to Twins. Okay, now while you were gone, I created a new character in a new scene, and I added a script to it. Now. When we create animation, we don't always want to wait for the animation to finish. So for example, if I wanted to hit a ball that's moving from right to left with a bat, we might want to stop that animation that the ball was having, so moving from right to left, and to throw the ball in some other direction. Or another example would be, in our case, to just blow up a balloon and resist the fact that the balloon is deflating constantly over a period of time. So how would we do that? Well, first of all, we want to get this body of the balloon. So we want to inflate this uh, yellow circle. And how are we going to do that? Well, whenever we press a button, we want to make this body bigger. So how do we get input? Well, func input of event and if event dot is action pressed let's define an action so i'm gonna go to project settings and input map and let's add a new action blow and press enter and now i'm gonna click here and let's just do it on spacebar so if i basically press my spacebar and i don't make a typo here then we just call a function, let's just call it blow harder. Okay, and our blow harder function is going to simply animate our balloon. So for that, it's very important to use the same twin. We don't want to animate the same property with multiple twins. So let's just make this twin global. So let's just say var blow twin and let's 
uh, let it like that. And if low twin exists, so low twin, then we want to kill it. We want uh, that sounded more violent than I wanted to. We just want to get rid of uh, the current animation of that twin. But yes, the function call is blow twin dot kill, and we want to recreate it. So basically, blow twin equals to get three dot create twin. Okay, and now that we have our twin, we want to make our balloon grow. So how do we do that? Well, blow twin dot twin property, and let's just say that we want to apply that property to the body we want to scale it up and let's scale it up by a little amount so vector 2 of 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 and over 0 0.3 seconds and let's make it as relative because we want to make the balloon grow bigger and bigger and not just stop at 0 0.2 and finally, we want our balloon to gradually deflate. So this is the, the main issue that we are creating. So low twin dot twin property body scale. And we want to get it to vector two of one and one. And let's deflate over three seconds this time and not make it as relative. We want to just get to one one. Okay, so let's see how this works now. If I press F6, you'll see I have this little guy here, which is doing nothing. But if I press space, you can see I can continuously press space. And I'm basically stopping the deflating animation that is happening in the background. Because if I press space only once, Yet, yes, it gets blown up, but it starts deflating. Now, well, it would be a shame if I had to wait every time for it to deflate and only afterwards start inflating again. So, basically, by using blowTwin.kill, I am blowing this up and stopping the animation which is deflating the balloon. So I can now press as fast as I can to make my balloon bigger. And of course, I could add now a bunch of functionality to this. So for example, I could make the balloon pop. So just free this element and play some animation if uh, the balloon is too big. Or I could make this character rise up or go down. So for example, I could say if, I don't know, uh, body.scale is larger than vector2 of 1.5 and 1.5 then we want the position dot y to be plus equal to 100 times delta why not and otherwise uh, we want the position to simply go down so position dot y oh well, actually if we want to go up we have to do minus equal because the y coordinates is are at the top and if we want to go down, we say plus equal and 100 times delta. Okay, and if I run now, you'll see that my balloon is falling. But if I inflate it enough, it is rising up. And if I let it deflate, then it starts coming down again and so on. Now, while we have created some animations, they look kind of boring. Like, yeah, it moves from right to left to right again and so on. But as you can see, this animation does not really look natural. The movement speed of our characters is very constant. And because of that, it doesn't really send any emotion. So what if we wanted to express something to the player to say that, hey, uh, this character down below is more angry, so he's going to push harder or to come back harder or something like that. Well, that's why I created this scene here with uh, Daniel and the cooler Daniel. And uh, we want to make the cooler Daniel animate in a more cool way. So how are we going to do this? If not with transitions and easing. Now, a transition specifies 
a mathematical function that the movement should follow, and easing basically specifies how quickly we start the animation on that function. Now, before I lose you, do you have to know math or these functions in order to be able to apply them? For the most part, you don't, because Godot actually provides a cheat sheet which we can follow in order to achieve the most commonly used transitions. Now, let's imagine that we wanted to do this transition. We only have to specify that the twin should follow the isIn easing, and also that the transition function is an exponential. So how do we do that in code? Well, we could be chaining these functions here, but since the lines are already big enough, we can simply write them above. We can just say uh, twin cooler Daniel, and we can specify the easing. So that is to what? Well, we want to set the ease to ease in, and what else we want? We want the function to be, let's see, between cooler Daniel dot set transition set trans to the transition which is exponential. Okay, so we wrote two lines of code and let's see how this looks like. Immediately you can tell that this character is angry and wants to smash something. It's it's got such a powerful movement. So you see what a huge difference just uh, some easing does. And we can try any other transition. So one other cool one is the transition elastic. This makes the character bounce a little. So let's try it again. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something anyway. Uh, and the spring transition and so on. Uh, Maybe let's change the is to is in or is out. Yeah, maybe is in out. Why not? And let's press F6. And yeah, it's a pretty, pretty cool transition. Now, I hope this has been helpful. And I would honestly really want you to not stop here. Go right now in Godot and create some animations and show them to me. If you want, you can send me a message on Twitter or you can make a post and tag me in that post, because I would honestly love to hear from you and to see your animations. Now, again, thanks for watching. If you want, please consider subscribing and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.